If you're looking to improve the look of your footage, then learning how to edit is crucial. The edit is where you can create transitions, add sound effects, color grade, and stylize your footage. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 video editing tips that every editor should know. It's coming up. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can make your footage stand out. I'm gonna show you how you can make your films and videos look much more interesting, and I'm gonna be showing you how to do all of this in the edit. This is where the magic happens. So I've got a variety of different clips on my timeline, and I'm gonna use these to show you just what difference adding each of these tips can make to your footage. Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. This is where I'm going to be getting all of my music and sound effects for today's video. Okay, let's get the most boring tip out of the way first so that we can move on to things that are a little bit more exciting and creative. And the first one is organizing your footage and assets. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're working on a YouTube video or a big Hollywood feature film, always organize your footage and assets so that everything is easy to find and easy to work with. For example, when I'm done shooting everything I need for a project, I'll create a folder on my computer called, in this case, 10 video editing tips every editor should know. Then in that folder, I'll have a folder for footage, I'll have a folder for for music, graphics, and anything else I might need to edit that video. How you folder your footage and assets is completely up to you. Just do whatever works best for you and your workflow. And once you've done this, you can then drag all of these folders into your editing software, and now everything is easy to find and work with. Okay, moving on to something a little bit more exciting, speed ramps. Speed ramps are when you speed up or slow down part of your clip, but rather than an abrupt speed up or slow down, you gradually accelerate or decelerate. Take this drone shot rising up through the streets of Paris to reveal the Eiffel Tower, for example. Now, this is a great shot, but the problem is it's a little bit too long. What if we want to get to our focal point a little quicker? Well, this is where we would use a speed ramp. So I'm gonna play my clip and then stop it where I want the speed ramp to start, about here. I'm gonna select Shift B, and then gonna skim forward to where I want my speed ramp to stop and press Shift B again. And I can now speed this part of the clip up. So rather than it being 100% speed, I'm gonna to go to Custom and I'm gonna type in 3000%. Let's take a look. Much better, we now get to our focal point much quicker. Now we could of course just cut to our focal point, but that wouldn't be as creative, it wouldn't be as interesting, and it's these little editing tricks that really help keep your audience engaged. Also, if your speed ramp is looking a little off, a little unnatural, then the chances are it's because it's lacking motion blur. Usually when a camera moves quickly, it creates motion blur, but don't worry, we can fix this in the edit. Now this effect didn't come with my editing software, I had to download and install it, but as always, everything I mention in this video will be linked in the description below. Now, let's take a look at this shot. First, without motion blur, and then again with. It's subtle, but it definitely helps improve the look of that shot and gives it a much more natural look. The Ken Burns effect. This is where you zoom into your footage in the edit. Let's say you've got a static shot like this one here, for example. It's okay, nice framing, but adding the Ken Burns effect or zooming into our clip is going to help bring it to life more. It's gonna help guide our viewer's eye and draw them into the scene. Take this gimbal shot tracking to the right, for example. It looks okay, but now let's add a zoom and now we have this. A much more dynamic shot with the camera tracking right and zooming in. All of the clips in this sequence are static shots, but with the Ken Burns effect added, we now have this consistent zoom effect, bringing much more focus to each shot. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can add this effect. Some editing software will have this effect built in, others you might need to do it manually by adding keyframes. The most important thing here is to experiment with this technique and use it to pull your audience in. Okay, number four, sound effects. Sound effects are a great way to take your footage to the next level and the possibilities are endless. You could use a whoosh sound effect to transition from one clip to another. You could use them to make your shot more dramatic. You could even use them to make something that would ordinarily be quite boring, like picking up a phone. 
and make it look and sound much more interesting. Also, did you notice we combined techniques there? Not only did we use a whoosh sound effect to pick up the phone, but we started with a speed ramp. Now, as an editor, I highly recommend that you have an archive of sound effects that you can just dip into whenever needed. This is really gonna help speed up your workflow. Personally, I get all of my sound effects from Epidemic Sound because they have a huge archive and it's all really easy to find. You can literally just type into the search bar whatever you're looking for. Let's type in a rooster. And there we go, a selection of rooster sound effects. So the search tool is really good, but as well as this, they also have sound effects albums. And this comes in really useful. Each one is dedicated to a different category. We've got whoosh sound effects, weather, cars, ambient, and anything else you could possibly need. Also, I can access all of these sound effects from anywhere in the world because it's all online. So be sure to take advantage of combining sound effects with your footage, because this will not only help increase the production value of your footage, but it will also help keep your audience engaged. Okay, number five, music. Music has a huge impact on your footage. It creates an atmosphere. It can change the mood. It can change the way an audience reacts to your film and it can help tell a better story. So having a good understanding of how to edit music will give you a huge advantage when it comes to editing video. Take this woman running through an array of beautiful flowers during sunset, for example. With happy, upbeat music, this shot is positive, warm, and blissful. But if we change the music and maybe give it a darker, more moodier color grade, all of a sudden this woman could be running for her life in a horror movie. Again, just like with sound effects, it's really important as an editor that you've always got a good archive of music that you can dip into whenever needed. For this, I'm gonna head back to Epidemic Sound because not only do they have a really good sound effects library, but they also have a huge archive of music. Again, all really easy to find, everything from cinematic, hip hop, rock, electro beats, plus they release new tracks every single week. So I'm gonna download two completely different tracks. Go back to my timeline, and now we have this scientist. With inspirational music, this shot seems positive, like he's close to finding a cure. But with darker, more sinister music, he's an evil villain planning to take over the world. Or take this woman walking her luggage through the airport. This could be an inspirational travel video, or if we add some rock music, this could be the opening shot of our lead character in a short film. Music will change the mood and the feel of your footage, so take advantage of it. If you'd like to try Epidemic Sound for free, then they're offering a free 30-day trial to anyone that uses the link in my description. Plus, they're also offering a massive 50% off an annual personal plan. So a huge saving for any of you looking for music and sound effects. Links will be in the description below. Okay, number six, transitions. Put simply, transitions take the audience from one shot to another. The most basic version of this is a straight cut like this. We've gone from a shot of me in the studio to a shot of a man running with his dog. Now we could just cut to the next shot like this. That's not too bad, works okay. Or if we wanted to represent, say, the passing of time, we could add a cross dissolve. Now these two shots blend and dissolve into each other, taking us from one shot to another. These are just a couple of examples of some very basic transitions, but feel free to get as advanced or as creative as you like. Again, some editing programs will have built-in transitions, some you might need to download or buy. The most important thing with transitions is that you make them meaningful. Transitions are usually only used when they serve a storytelling purpose, but when first starting out, feel free to experiment and get creative. Creative. Okay, tip number seven, J-cuts and L-cuts. J-cuts and L-cuts are used all the time in TV shows and feature films, and they're a way of joining two clips together using audio. Let me show you an example. On my timeline here, I have a shot of a mother and daughter playing peacefully on the beach, when all of a sudden, we cut to a very loud car. Now, what you saw there was a straight cut between these two clips, but now let's add a J-cut. This time, I'm going to extend and play clip two's audio over clip one before clip two has even come on screen. This means you hear what's happening in clip two before you see it, like this. The opposite of this would be an L cut. This is when the audio from clip one carries on to clip two. For example, imagine there was a big explosion and then the audio from that clip carried on to the next clip like this. L cuts and J cuts are a great technique to have in your editing toolbox. If you're not using them already, be sure to try. 
Okay, tip number eight, templates and presets. Templates and presets are like having a cheat code for video editing. Rather than spend hours, days, or weeks of your life building an effect from scratch, use a pre-made template. Again, some editing software will come with templates, others you might need to pay for. You can get pre-built logos, openers for your videos, lower thirds, animated titles, color grading LUTs. These are all customizable. They're gonna save you a ton of time and make your videos look much more professional. Templates and presets are nice and easy to work with, usually just drag and drop. I will link some of my favorites below. Number nine, the jump cut. The jump cut is a great way of adding more pace to your footage because it cuts out all the boring visuals and audio in your videos. Let me give you an example. Let's say I wanted to show you some of the products in this studio. Now I could spend five minutes gathering all of the products and putting them here on the table, but let's be honest, it would be a little bit boring to watch. So what's the solution? The solution is jump cuts. And just like that, we now have all the products on the table. It took less than five seconds and it was much more interesting to watch. Okay, let me give you one more example, this time with audio. Now imagine you're shooting a video, sat talking to the camera, just like what I am now, when all of a sudden you take a moment to pause. Now, this is gonna be incredibly boring for your audience to watch. So this time I'm going to remove the pause in this audio and we now have this when all of a sudden you take a moment to pause. Now, this is gonna be incredibly boring for your audience to watch. Much better, the jump cut, a sequential shot that makes it appear as though the action is leaping forward in time. Okay, tip number 10, shorten music. Now, 99% of the time, I'm not using the full track. Usually tracks are about three or four minutes in length, and sometimes all I need is a 60 second version for Instagram. So knowing how to shorten a song is a really important skill to have as an editor. And I'm not just talking about shortening the track to 60 seconds. Seconds. No, 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 no. I'm talking about creating a 60 second version of that track that ends with the end of that track. Now there's editing software out there that will do this for you. Adobe Premiere Pro has Remix, for example, but you have to pay for this and we don't all have the budget. So we're gonna go old school and do it manually. Okay, now on my timeline here, I have a 60 second sequence, but a three minute track. So I'm gonna cut the track towards the end, drag the first half of the track back like this, and then move the end of the track so that it lines up with the end of my sequence. You can then zoom in and look for beats in the track that line up, like these two here. Now, when we play this track back, it now seamlessly transitions into the end of the track, like this. Now the track that you choose will obviously depend on how easy this is to do. Some tracks will be easier than others, but the main takeaway here is to try and end your sequence or video with the end of the track. Now learning the basics of video editing is pretty straightforward, but it can take years to master. So if you're looking to learn more about video editing or sound design, then I highly recommend checking out this video here. I also have a ton more content on this channel around filmmaking and video production. Be sure to check it out. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.